So in this video, we're going to talk about Euler angles and how we can define and understand these in MATLAB. So just a little prerequisite, Euler angles are used to describe the orientation of a rigid body with respect to an observable reference frame. Now, if you found this video, you've most likely come across Euler angles and you do know what they are and how to describe them. Maybe the problem is you just don't know how to do this in MATLAB or you're looking for a similar way of describing it in another programming language. So this is just going to be a tutorial to describe the rotations and how we can use these rotations to describe a rigid body. Now, I'm going to use in this instance a MATLAB live script, which is not ideal. I get it. But in terms of being able to describe things, in this sort of manner, it is great for this. So what we've got is a live script, which will be in my GitHub link in the description. And we've got an axis system, which is a right-handed orthogonal axis system. I've defined just here a set of unit vectors, our X unit vector, Y unit vector, and Z unit vector. And I have plotted this in an orientation that is coincident with how an aircraft is generally described. So if we look at this coordinate system of an aircraft, you can see we've got our X, our Y to the right, and our Z goes down. This is a traditional NED axis system, and it's how we use to describe aircraft motion. If you look at my vector orientation, that's exactly what I've got, my X vector, pointing out the front, my y vector to the east, and my z vector pointing positively downwards. Now to achieve this, I've had to set the direction of my y and z axes in reverse, which is very simple in MATLAB. We just use this sort of set GCA wider reverse command and the same for the z direction. But this is just, this is just introducing what our system looks like. And now we've got these three separate sections, which we're going to fill in throughout this video, describing the three rotations. We're going to start with your. So your is a rotation about the z-axis, meaning that once we perform rotation, z1 is equal to z0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make use of the live editor's control numeric slider feature. And what we'll do is we'll just create a slider called psi. And we will set a minimum value of zero and a maximum of 360. That will allow us to perform full rotations in degrees. And we'll just leave the rest of it. So you see, as we move this up and down, our psi value changes. And it's the psi value that is reported in the workspace. So if I just, there you go. So you can see it's a psi value of 130. When I change it and let go, it runs the rest of this script. Next, we will define our our transformation matrix, which is just this matrix above. So we will say your is equal to. Now, I'm going to use the cos d function since we are keeping our slider in degrees. And we just pass these in exactly how you see them. So psi, d, psi of cos d psi 0 and then zero, zero, 001. So to perform our rotation, we will create a new variable x1, and we will use our transformation matrix yaw multiplied by the original unit vector x, which is defined at the start here. And we will do the same for our y1 and z1. Having performed the rotations, we're going to be able to visualize this. And I'm just going to grab a bunch of this code from before. And we'll make this figure two. We're going to keep all of this the same. And I'll just copy this last part. And we'll update these to x1, y1, z1. The reason for this is we'll be able to see the original, the original uh, the original orientation of the line and then how they've varied with the transformation 
So to give us a better indication, I'll just set these line widths of the original one to be one. So if we run this now, and I'm just going to find a decent rotation, because we're going to rotate around this, this Z axis. So really we want to focus on our X and Y. If I just copy that, there we go. Just to set our viewpoint so it's consistent every time we run this. And you can see it looks like nothing's happened because our size, of course, set to be zero. But if I start to increase this, you'll see the vectors are rotating in a clockwise manner as defined by the incremental value of size. So in this case, 30. If we go to 90, you see our X and Y axes are now aligned with the original vector. And this will go all the way to perform a full rotation of 360 degrees, in which case it returns essentially back to zero. We can then obviously go in the reverse. You get the picture. We're rotating around the Z axis by whatever value psi we have. And we can look at the rotation you know, a little bit better, but this is a nice visual representation of what rotation about yaw looks like. So if we now move on to the pitch, we're going to do exactly the same thing. So I'll first create my control slider. This is going to be theta. And we're going to do the exact same range of values again. Minimum value of zero, a maximum value of 360. And then we'll define our rotation matrix, this time as pitch. So it's going to be cos d theta, a zero sine d theta, zero, one, zero, and then a negative sine d theta, zero, cos d theta. So although the, although the vectors here depict that we should get x2, that multiplies by x1. Because I'm wanting to demonstrate individual rotations, we will actually revert back to our original unit vector defined at the start, so we can see that rotation. So I will just keep this as x1 is equal to our pitch times by x, our y1 is equal to our pitch times by y, and our Z1 is equal to the pitch times by Z. And again, I'm just going to copy this code for plotting. There's no point writing it out from scratch. And then if we run this once more, I'll find a, a view which looks good because we're actually rotating about the Y axis. That's the green one this time. So we'll copy that code. And now if we start to increase theta, we should see the, the blue axis go up. And that's exactly what we see. So as we start to increase our theta, this essentially is simulating like an aircraft pitching up. So we're flat on the runway, nominal position. As we go to take off, sort of pitch back up, increase our lift, and so on. And then we can again go all the way over just to visualize pitch. So if I set that to about 40 degrees for future reference. And then we'll look at finally our roll angle. Now we're going to do exactly the same thing. We will say our roll is equal to a numerical slider a minimum value of 0 and a maximum of 360. In fact, this won't be raw, this will be called phi because our transformation matrix is called roll. So 1, 1, 0, 0, cos d of phi, negative sine d phi. and then cos d phi. Similarly to before, I'm going to 
perform this on the individual unit vector from the start. So we're going to say x1 is equal to our role transformation matrix multiplied by x, y1 is role multiplied by y, and z1 is equal to role multiplied by z. We're going to just copy this figure information once more. And then let's look for rotation, which makes sense. So we're going to be probably around there. Put in that code. And now if we just roll by this, you can see we are rolling a clockwise motion about the Z axis. So one thing to bear in mind is that if you change the sign of these signs, so if I was to make this positive and this one negative, we will now roll in the opposite directions. So you'll see the Y vector goes this way this time, whereas before it was going the opposite way. This is important because there is no orientation which is correct, but you must be consistent. So if you are rolling in a clockwise motion in one axis, it makes sense to do that in the same axis. Otherwise, you will have to start keeping track of your angles and which direction is positive and negative based on rotation. So I've defined them the way I like to define them. You may define them differently, other people may define them differently. That's fine, just remember, be consistent. Now, if you want to actually compile this, so if we now just create a, a new section and I will call this just compiled rotation, what we'll say is that if you have a phi that is zero, a theta that is zero, and a psi that is zero, and we bring our three translations. So roll, pitch, and your. This is why I didn't want to do it this way in the first place, because this can actually get pretty confusing to visualize. But let's say we've got our three translations and we want to we want to actually rotate by one then the other then the other you always do this conventionally in your pitch roll hence why i've written it in this way your pitch roll so we would say that our cosine matrix is your times pitch times roll and then we would say that our x1 is equal to our cosine matrix multiplied by x And I'll do the same for y and z. And if we just copy all of this information here, I quite liked that view for now. So if we bring that view in there and we run this, let's figure five. Of course, we've got nothing happening, but now if we go to theta, let's say 45, you can see we've got a pitch up of 45 degrees which is what we sort of would have seen here from our pitch up and if i wanted to first yaw 180 degrees i can do that so this is why it gets a bit confusing you need to remember we've we first rotated from this orientation by 180 so then my blue face was this way and then we pitched up, and that is now the orientation of our axis system. And on top of that, if we wanted to roll another 45 degrees, we now have this unit vector orientation. We're pointing upwards, but we've got a sort of roll angle occurring in this, in this axis. So it, it gets pretty confusing very fast, which is why I wanted to initially break it down into sizable chunks for visualization purposes. Now, one thing with Euler angles that you need to be careful of is when you maximize rotation. So we're at zero, zero, zero here. Now, if I yaw 180, and you can see we've done that, we're facing 
this way now with our right vector over there and then I pitch 180 we are essentially now flying upside down so we're pointing back in the same direction because we yawed and then pitched back over 180 we have still got our our right vector off to the side and obviously our down vectors pointing upwards so if we were to now roll 180 we're back to the starting orientation but if you were to look at what your local orientations are it's 180 180 180 so these are things with other angles you need to consider that orientations can sometimes be misleading and actually there are some in between things that that allow us to interpret what our orientation is with respect to an observation point so if you enjoyed the video please do like comment and subscribe the source code will be in my github link is in the description hopefully that made things a little bit clearer maybe not but overall i'm hoping that if you've gone through this exercise you've gone through the code you may well have a better understanding of what each individual rotation does and the order of rotation when it's compiled in in a situation like an aircraft